Good afternoon and welcome to today's live webinar introducing the TI-84CE. My name is Daisy and I'm your host for this webinar. It's an absolute delight to introduce today's panelists, Brian Lennon and John Bayman. Names I'm sure that you're very familiar with because they both have um, many years of experience both in mathematics teaching and also the implementation of technology into maths. Um, and you would have seen them, I'm sure, at hands-on PDs as well as the webinar that we've been running. Um, so you're in absolutely terrific hands today. Uh, today's panelists will actually introduce to you the latest addition to the TI-84 Plus family, which is the TI-84CE, which will be available uh, this September. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I'll leave it to Brian and John to fill you in on all its exciting features. Feel free to use uh, the chat window to basically communicate with the presenters and myself um, and we'll try and communicate back within the period of this webinar, if not definitely after the webinar. Uh, so shortly you'll see the presenter's desktop. Feel free to chat with us and I think what we'll do now is get started. So just bear with us for one second. We've got a nice uh, video to show you to get us into the mood of the 84 CE. Just one moment, it seems like we've got a technical difficulty. Just one second. Should we sing in the background, Daisy? Yeah, oh, there here we come. Here it comes. Looks great. Okay. No, sorry everybody. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was working absolutely fine during our practice session. There seems to be a bit of a, a, a lag. Brian, maybe you can tell us a funny joke <laughs> well, while I'll we're waiting. Say, I'll have to say it's my fault because I looked on the uh, the website and I saw the, the, uh, the promotional video for this um, new um, colour edition 84CE and I just thought wow this is great um, and um, and so when we we're doing the webinar for this I thought let's show let's show that promo video um, and so I put that on to Daisy through our uh, webinar system the it is um, it isn't as easy as just hey here's my desktop and it's playing a video um, due to the time differences in video and audio and that type of thing so if it's not going to work, we might have to run without it. You'll have to find it yourself. Go to the website. And Hang on. I think I may have worked it out. Oh, here we go. Yes. Here we are. This is good. It's <laughs> worth the wait, everyone. I do promise. <laughs> I hope so. lovely but now we'll hand over to John to get us started properly. Thank you Daisy. And so you should be able to see my desktop now. Uh, good, e good afternoon or good evening all from different parts of Australia. Uh, it's a sunny day here in Darwin. Just like to rub that in. I was down in Melbourne and my throat's a bit sore so uh, please bear with me. Um, it wasn't from shouting at the footy, it was the cold weather on it. Um, so you can see here, um, this is the new emulator, the TIE SmartView CE emulator. Um, and you would say, hang on a minute, it doesn't look any different. Well, yes, that's because it's in the TI-84 mode. Uh, this will be a free upgrade. Um, oh, we've got a beta version at the moment that we're using, but this will be a free upgrade for you later in the year when um, the handout becomes available as well. 
Um, so if I switch now to the color version, wow, look at that. I have to say, I'll get very excited about this. We now have color, we now have better pixel resolution, and we now have a bigger screen. So quite an impressive sight. Wouldn't you agree, Brian? Brian's not there. Daisy's there, I'm sure. Okay, so we'll do a graph, we'll do a cubic. So nothing has too, too much difference here at the moment with the cubic. But we can see that now, rather than just having a line that will be shown, we can see that the line will now be blue when it's drawn. And if I graph that, we have a beautiful blue cubic line that's drawn. And really, at the moment, there's no advantages of that over any other, uh, even on the AP4, unless we're going to add more lines to it or do extra things to it. So at the moment, it looks pretty. I'm just going to change the window slightly to, to make it look a bit bigger. Negative 5 to 5. All right. So we can see our cubic here. But it only really comes into its own when we add other lines. In the past, we would make it bold or dotted or maybe have that ball that moves along the line. But now, if we want to add another line, many different lines we can add. Um, this time, I think I'm going to show off a few of the um, things that have been around for a little while on the operating system on the 84, is the quick keys on the top. So in F1, we have much quicker stuff on fractions. In F2, to do with functions. F3, to do with matrices and the variables of Y in F4. So we're going to go into functions, and I'm going to graph the derivative number 3. And we're going to differentiate it with respect to x of this cubic. Uh, now, to get that, we used to be able to go into vars. We're much quicker to go into into alpha f4. We're going to differentiate it with respect to y. And rather than the specific point, we're going to do it for any point. So for every point, so x equals x. And then when we produce our graph, and we can talk to the students before we press graph on this, what it's going to look like. So this cubic will then draw me time predicting a parabola there we go well done Brian go to the top of the class there's a lovely little parabola being drawn the functionalities are all exactly the same as before the nice thing as well if we were doing something like intersect is that we can now the students have to not have to worry too much they can see much easier which line is which now so the blue one yep that's the one I want especially if there's more than two obviously the red one. And if I wanted to find this, this value here, well, it's close to negative 1.5. So rather than moving the cursor, let's just type in negative 1.5. And it gives me the intersect point. Very nicely done. And we could also, don't forget that those values are available in its short-term memory. If we needed to use those values later, we have a value stored in here. We could store that as a different letter because every time that we do a calculation in the graph, the x value gets wiped over, so we store it as a letter. And now that number, that was the intersect, is now stored as the variable a. And if we then, for example, wanted to find the area of the graph, we need to go to the graph first. That would help us. Can't find it. We could do it there, but it wouldn't actually give us the area. Second calc, the area. We could now find it, perhaps, of the blue curve between that value there, so between A and, let's say, the origin, 0. And there is a nice shading of the area. Brian, is there anything at this point that you'd like to add to that? Um, I know I've got students who are pretty happy to see that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and just another one that I'm, I... Uh, often start on with um, just some of the lovely colour and um, shading. Uh, an activity that I've done across the years, or crops from year seven onwards, is drawing functions um, and making pictures out of them. You know, say oh, parabolas yeah. as the bottom of a boat and sine curves as the ocean. Um, that activity to now revisit is just going to be um, absolutely awesome with the, with the Fantastic colour. Different that you could include, yeah, it'd be lovely. All right, so I'm going to now move on to the other second, so well, another second thing that I find um, very cooler now about the, the color version um, is the fact that we can now put images onto it. And I'm just going to reset all this. 
to save me having to delete things. Just reset all the RAM. Uh, just reset everything for me. Okay. And now there are images stored on this calculator. So in the graphing screen at the moment, nothing's any different. But we now have images that either we can download, and I'll show you that later, or um, images that are already on the calculator. And we use one that's already on the calculator at the moment. So to find those, they're in format. There's a couple of other ways, but format for now will allow us to get to it. And here you can see that there's background. And it's the background that, that we're going to change. I scroll up rather than down as I can be bothered. And there are five images already pre-installed on the handheld and on the software. A nice bridge somewhere. Um, a stairs of a playground, a flower, a water fountain, and a starfish. So we're going to focus on the uh, water bubbler. And as soon as we select that one and now go into graph, we can now see that the image is overlaid onto the axes. Um, really nice touch and now allows us to for either the students to use these images or Google images like Brian will show you later or their own images and put um, extra functionality and relevance to what the mathematics is that they're doing. Uh, to make this a bit easier for me, I'm just going to move this axis and there's many places I could move it to uh, to where the maximum is, but for me I'm going to move it over to the base of the tap. Um, and also, because this is a real um, picture, a real picture, I'm sure that's the right language, so there you go. Uh, but it is, to, it is proportional and it is to scale. We need to make sure these axes are to scale. So to do that, make sure that we go into, sorry, go into zoom and we go zoom square. Rather than being a rectangular window, rather than 10 by 10, it's now made all these dashes the same. And we're going to move it across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to move it to the left by eight and down by two. Nice question to ask the kids. How are we going to move this axis to the left by eight and down by two? Well, we could go to the chat window, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll do it. So for everybody else, uh, we are transposing it or translating it to the left, so therefore we are going to go and insert an eight because we're going to add eight to it. And I could go to the end of the number, so I'm going to do it here instead. Eight added here keep the scale the same, I'm not worried about that, and we're going to move it two down. So to move it two down, again, is actually adding two, and we can insert, add two to this one. Has he done it right? Yes, beautiful. Uh, just again to show off the colour functionality, these axes are a bit um, plain now, and hopefully the kids will um, have the excitement of changing the colours, but that won't become the focus of the lesson, uh, we'll see. Um, but into um, format, we can change the axes as well. I'm going to go down to choose the axes, um, and this time I'm going to choose a colour that perhaps won't, it won't be one of my lines. So there we can see the axes potentially much clearer. Sorry about this, this make it a bit bigger for you. I have to shut this down early, and there we go. All right. Now, again, something that's been around the end spy for a while, but is new to the colour uh, CE is the fact that we can now plot some points on here and do regression off by plotting points. So to do that, we're going to go into Stat, cross the Calculate. These functionalities aren't any different. You can either scroll down to the bottom or scroll up to the bottom. And there are two new sections that have been on the Inspire for a while but are new to this calculator, to the 84. Uh, that is Quick Plot and Fit, which we're going to use now. And manual fit, which I'll show you later. So we're going to choose E. What that allows us to do is to drop some points. As it says here, it's going to drop some points. So I'm just going to scroll across. There's a bit of a lag when I use the software. Well, even more lag. What I normally end up doing is shooting off the screen on this one. <laughs> You'll hold the button down. Hit, yeah, and hit it a dozen times, next thing it'll fly off the screen. It'll be over the neighbour. Yeah. Alright, so normally this works a bit quicker, and definitely on the handheld it works quicker. Um, like I said, this is the trial version of the software, so hopefully by the time that this is available to you. So I'm going to drop a point there. No, it's not going to do it. So I'm not going to go too much, I don't think. I think it's going to take far too long for me on this 
Maybe it's the um, WebEx is also slowing it down. When I did it earlier, it was the, working um, a lot. The, yeah, generally, the software does seem to go faster in the handhelds, um, yeah. and, and the students, students fly with that. Uh, but cripes, the, the emulator is just such a useful thing to have. Um, I know in my classroom I have the luxury of, of um, inter interactive whiteboards, and so I've got the you know, meter and a half tall calculator yep. up the front of the classroom, and it's um, it's connected to the to the interactive board. So you press the button on the on the, the whiteboard, and um, and she works. I also think I didn't have enough patience, Brian. If I actually held the uh, arrow down for a bit longer, it started to jump across quite nicely. So um, I was lacking patience. Again, another thing to talk to the students about is, is actually how many points do we have to put on there. Um, nice discussion for the students to have about which is better, how many do we need. Um, so I think we're going to maybe. Three's, to a, three's an absolute minimum. But, uh, yeah. but yes, a good discussion. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, and now here, obviously, this is the handheld. We'd see this tab above S5 because we're using the software. It looks a bit weird, but this is S5, so we're going to press S5 now. We're going to fit the equation. What equation do we want to fit? We're going to fit a quadratic <coughs> number three. Excuse me. And there we go. Obviously, the points that I chose. And again, a really nice conversation to have with the students. Um, get them to share their screens. Why did mine? go up so high, whereas I, I, I know for a fact that if I chose, chose that point and perhaps a point at the top and this point, it wouldn't replicate that. Really nice, again, really rich discussion to have with the kids and the advantage of definitely technology and graphics calculator is to achieve that very quickly and then it's the discussion where the, the real learning occurs. So we're going to, again, S5 that to store it. We'll store it, the information in list one and list two, so dump those points into there for me. I'll plot, set up the stat plot automatically, and it'll also store the regression equation in Y1. I could change any of those if I want to, but I'm happy with all that information. Not if I go too far, I'm not. So nothing's really any different on here, but we can see that in Y equals, the equation has now been dumped into it. In stat plot, it's been turned on, and in statistics, the information of those three points is now in here. And like I said, if I did it to more detail, then we would get a better match. Um, don't need to need to do more than three points, but definitely spread those points out. I use the analogy of talking to kids about the accuracy of a pistol over a rifle. Um, that's not a good analogy now, thinking about it, but um, in the old days, that was the analogy I used to use. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Brian? Well, John, if you're talking parabolas, I mean, a drink of water is all very nice, but I. You did mention you went to the footy on the weekend. I did go to the footy, yeah, I did. Yep. I prefer to think of footballs. Okay. Well, you've, you've led me nicely into it, <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll show it quickly. Um, what you can also do is take your own images. Thanks, Brian. This is if we planned this. Um, it is. And here's some images. Like that, yeah. Ready. <laughs> yeah. And this one here is uh, an image of a video that I took um, of my boys playing footy, and I've just paused it. Um, by my iPad with the ball up um, at its peak, and then I've just taken a, a photo of that on my iPad and then emailed it to myself. So really simple to put this onto the software and equally onto the handheld exactly the same. Just while that's um, opening up, John, um, just in itself a, a really interesting exercise, send kids around the school um, with cameras or with their phones, um, to just take photos of things that you think, or that they think, will produce interesting uh, mathematical graphs. Um, it, it's really wonderful what you get back. You, you'll get, of course, parabolas, you'll get straight lines, you get ramps and so forth. Um, I've had kids, I, I teach in a P12 school, and I've had kids going over to the primary play equipment and looking at a spiral type um, jungle gym thing that the, kids, that the primary kids play on. And from the angle that they photographed it, they were then subsequently able to fit uh, a sine curve. Yep, which lovely. I thought was quite creative. Yeah, yep. that's fantastic. And, and obviously we've had that for a while at ease with the, the iPad app, the CI Inspire yeah. iPad app, but, uh, and to some extent on the Inspire, but this is the first time we've been able to have it on the 84. Um, so this is fantastic. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it on the Smart View, but to do it on the handheld is exactly the same. 
There's a new piece of software on the TI website, and the, a new updated TI Connect called TI Connected CE. That looks like this. And if you look, you can see that my calculators, I have two calculators at the moment, connected to my computer. And we'll do it exactly the same with these handhelds. So, but I'm not going to use the handhelds for now. I'm going to use the emulator. So I find my photo. Here it is. We'll use this one here. And I literally just drag it and drop it across. Be careful where you want to save that image. Um, at the moment, they've got images in 1 to 5. So I'll, I'll change where I save that. I'll save it into 6. You can send that image across for me. And when it's done that, it's sweet, hey? Tick. There we go. This poor computer. Oh, it's working overtime. John, I find it really interesting that you know, despite you know the various software packages that can you know that can do this sort of stuff and put images and, and graphs together, um, students tend to really respond to the fact that this is on their calculator. It's on their handheld. You know, the thing that they use in their maths classes. Um, and, and to them, I think it, it really helps build the connections. Yeah, and there's definitely there's definitely a much, much more ownership um, of the of what they found, um, and not only ownership but also um, an understanding of what the math is telling them. I think when they've done it in textbooks, they they go, oh, yeah, that's okay, I sort of get it. When they see it in pictures, they go, yeah, yeah, I, I sort of get it. But when they actually, but it's their images, and they 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 experience that kicking of that footy they can actually really go, yep, yeah, I understand what was going on at that moment. Mm. Um, so you can see that there is the image, not the best photo that I've taken, um, and it hasn't okay. transferred too well, but we can see that there, you can get the idea, and there again, we could actually plot a curve between one of my son's feet, the, the ball here, and my other son's feet, and do some really beautiful maths with that quadratic that gets produced. And on that note, I'll pass you over to the lovely Brian. Fantastic. So I'm just uh, sharing my desktop with you now, and I have a PowerPoint to show you, and a few other little activities. I'm just going to throw this into slide show mode. And I'm also going to mess around with some photos. In particular, um, a photograph that in itself may not look all that interesting, just a block of um, plastic or perspex. Um, but I'm going to use it to demonstrate the refraction of light and do a few calculations and subsequently um, uh, use Snell's law to work out calculator refractive index. See how we go. Um, I won't. I won't demonstrate all of it. I've quickly got some of these things caught onto a PowerPoint, and John has shown you some of the key things already. But um, importing the image, uh, if I'm looking for refraction of light, I can obtain a suitable image either by experiment, which would be the preferable method certainly, or the internet. Um, in my case, I actually admit I did the latter, uh, but I'll show you that. It's easy enough, Google Images. Um, and then, as you've already seen, using the Connect software to place the image on your handheld and set it as the background. Um, very important then is to uh, set the, um, the window settings to uh, square and uh, if you forget that, you might end up with some really weird angles because obviously the angles that you're measuring on your screen will look a little little different. Or you might, the mathematics might give you the correct angle, but um, you'll look at that and see it doesn't look like the angle that's on your screen. Um, a quick way to check that, by the way, I, I, I often throw in, say, y equals x, and students see, okay, does that look like it's running at 45 degrees to each of the axes? Yes, we have a square screen. Um, the new quick plot and equation feature is just brilliant for quickly grabbing the, um, in this case, linear equations. Um, or alternatively, you could just locate two points and use a two-point formula to get your equations. The ones that, we c that are going to be important to us, uh, and you'll see the image shortly, um, 
uh, a linear equation representing the, flat, the face of the block, which is you know, a straight line, uh, the normal, um, and I used a point gradient formula to find that. Uh, the gradient, of course, was the negative reciprocal of the uh, of the face, and the point I located. I used trace to locate the point where the where the light ray struck the block. Um, I constructed the incident ray, the refracted ray, um, used this formula to determine the angle between them. So the tan of the angle being the difference between the two gradients of two lines divided by 1 plus the product of the gradients. And I had to do that for angle of incidence and angle of refraction, ultimately substituted into Snell's law to determine the refractive index. Uh, now, thrill seekers, while you're quickly taking notes on all this, um, I should just remind you that we will be giving you this PowerPoint. Uh, I think um, Daisy may have mentioned you get this PowerPoint to take away at the end of the webinar. Um, I, I always think it's quite important that people have something to take to take home with them from a webinar, you know, even if they are sitting at home to do the webinar. Um, so here I am grabbing the image. I went. I just simply typed refraction into Google Images. I thought the one top centre looked good. Uh, so you've seen how the drag drop thing works to so place it on your calculator. And there it is set against axes uh, that are square. And at this point, I'm going to swap across to an emulator to show you some of that. So here's the same thing in my emulator. And to to work out the, say for example, the equation of the face here. Actually, I've got, I've got a few. I'll just switch and switch. One. I'll do the last one for you. So I've got a few of these switched on. Uh, now I'll, I'll do the first one for you. Let's do that. Let's go um, stat. We'll go across to calculations. Uh, you can either go down to the bottom of the list, or you can cheat and click up which of course will then give you the bottom of the list. Uh, I'm going down here just to show you. So quick plot, sounds good. Let's run with that. And we'll place our two points. Hopefully this might work a little quicker than your parabola. Oh, we really raced off the edge, didn't we? that one. And the, the other one that I thought, I'd, I'd just like to look for some more critical points. So I actually looked for a point where, or you can put, well, of course it only takes two points for a straight line. Um, why not go with, a, go with extra? Um, and I looked for the point where our incident ray, oh by the way, our, our light ray is coming from left to right. Um, so this is our incident ray on the left that we're looking at. And with a little bit of patience, I locate this critical point here. Um, and as John pointed out, the values x equals negative 1.95 and y equals negative 2.44, etc. are um, are being stored into those memory locations. I use another piece of technology at this point. I actually store it onto a piece of paper. You remember that stuff? Um, and then I just simply use the point gradient formula um, to calculate the angle of, sorry, the equation to the normal. Um, so what I want to do now is, uh, I guess, enter that point and fit an equation. As John's already shown you, we can select which regression model we want. I like linear. Um, and off we go. And it will invite me to store this now. Now I'm actually go I'm going to store it down into uh, I'm going to store it into Y5 because I the first time I did this was in Y1 and I'll keep that for the calculations that we've already that I have already set up. But um, normally you just put that into your first first uh, function. Uh, so let's just take a look in the function editor. 
So down here, uh, sorry, down here at Y5, this is the one that we just calculated, and as you see, it's fairly close to the one that I did earlier on. Uh, to calculate the equation of the normal, I would take the ex um, gradient as being the negative reciprocal of negative 1.094, uh, and then use the point that I indicated earlier uh, to then use point gradient formula. There are other ways of doing it. John, um, when we were talking about this before, suggested we could we could construct a line uh, along this face, which of course gives us the gradient, and then just by trial and error move it down to here by adjusting the y-intercept. That would be a valid approach as well, and all these things are, are, are I believe, valid mathematical approaches of investigation. Um, so let's just switch. Well, that'd be a nice thing if ships were doing this as an investigation for them to write up in their, you know, in, during their in their analysis, yeah, um, of, of how they actually did do it and and their assumptions that they made and different approaches. Um, again, I think it, uh, reflecting on what they've done and why they've done it is really quite powerful. It is, yes, and, it, and it's very scientific, and I, I think that also acknowledges um, the value of different approaches. Yeah, uh, and, that, and that's quite valid. Okay, so now I've now switched off that fifth one that you saw me construct. I'll go with the four original ones, and here we have our uh, face. Here we have the normal and our incident ray, and then our refracted ray. Okay, and of course the angles that I'm interested in, uh, and here's where colour really helps. I can talk about the angle of incidence as being the angle between the the purpley or magenta line and the red line, which is the normal, and our angle of refraction being the angle between the, the green line and, uh, sorry, up this way, the green line and the, um, and the normal. Uh, let's just swing it back. It looks in fantastic in all those colours with the image behind as well. It just looks amazing. Yeah, and it just really helps the, um, helps the discussion that you can talk about which line, uh, yeah, the red one. Um, uh, and of course I mentioned before that the importance of having these on this square setting. Uh, so there's the capture of the, um, I've put two slides there, the, the image with the graph and the four functions, and here's our calculations. Um, I've used the formula once using the, um, the um, gradient of the magenta line and the red line to calculate the angle of incidence of 45.3 degrees and then between the green line and the red line the angle of um, refraction being 29 degrees. Uh, Snell's formula gives me the refractive index of the block which I think makes it look a little bit like a type of plastic or perspex. Um, good fun, I really like that being an old physics teacher, I reckon that's a winner. Um, and by the way, mu much more accurate than the first time I did this, I had the old uh, light boxes set up uh, in the dark and we'd put down marks on the paper and kids would put draw lines on it and get a protractor out to construct their angles. Um, this is actually more accurate. There we go. Back to you, back to you, John. I'd nearly jump up. You gave you a sneak preview of my next bit, but I'll... Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hand back to John. Thanks, Ryan. That's great. And like I said, yeah, I think that, um, again, if the kids had actually done it for their own block as well um, and, um, and got that image and then used their image, I think there's, um, that's a really rich uh, folio task there in the making, so it's fantastic. So thanks for that. All right. So my second one is looking at another function that I mentioned earlier, and that is in stats, um, which is the manual fix. Um, and it's funny to think about me saying this, I must be, must be getting old, but um, when I, we used to do scatter plots, we'd be expected to draw a line of s bit. And with the introduction of technology, I think to some extent that, that skill or that thought process, to some extent, is lost. Again, it's uh, available on the Inspire and the, the iPad app, but um, on the 84, we haven't had that. We've had our regression equations, but not actually being able to manually fit something, and now we can actually do that. So I'm going to show you where I like to get some some data from, or data, depending on which part of the world you're from. You can see at the moment I have no information in here. It's like a magic trick. Um, I don't really, uh, the, using the textbooks for statistics doesn't 
push my buttons overly. Um, I feel that the kids don't really have any ownership of the, of the data. They don't, it's available, it's useful at times, but not in the main. I like them to collect data about themselves or information about themselves that they choose. Um, and also I like them to, to join in and, and contribute to uh, the Census at School, the ABS Census at School website. Um, to me, this is a fantastic resource. Brian and I were talking about it earlier. Um, it's a rich resource in terms of resources for all years um, and also data that we can access from previous years. Um, sadly, as you can see here, the ABS stopped funding this um, back in August, um, but luckily AAMT, um, the Australian Association of Mathematics Teachers, and a, um, a, second, a third party have, have taken it on board, um, and hopefully that will be resurrected later this year. So, so fingers crossed on that. Um, many ways we can get the data, either from a random sample, so students decide what facts they want to look at themselves, or a prepared sample, so that's clean data. So I'm going to choose data for calculators. If I was using um, my iPad app, I could click straight onto this button here, or even using the TI Inspire software, and it would open it automatically on, into that software. Um, but I'm going to use the Excel version here for now. All right. And I've already opened this one up. That's the information there. I've also used the TI uh, data editor to dump those values that I had from here into here, just for height and value button height. And then I've saved those columns. Um, and you can see, notice the new style. It's called um, XU, 8X, eight, eight I think. Um, you can see it there. No, this is a new form of um, saving um, information for the 84CE. Uh, that then allows me to do something very similar to what I did with putting the image on. I go to like my smart view. I get the two documents that I have, those two lists, and simply just, oops, sorry, I apologize. Go to the right screen. That's better. Grab those two documents and just copy them. There you go, 8XL on your iceberg. It will dump it straight across. Which list do we want them in? List one and list two, that will do me fine. Thank you very much. And it will send them across. Again, if you are using this with students, um, you could again email it to them as a document, um, and they could open it up using their TI Connect themselves at home, or you could share it onto a couple of handhelds using your TI Connect, like here. Uh, and equally then, once they've got it going on one or two, nice little mathematical question here, we could actually use the, the link functionality. And I won't work on here because we've got the smart view. Ooh, okay. please, please forgive me. Um, the, here's a link functionality and connect the calculators to each other using a mini USB to mini USB cable and transfer the data that way. Okay. So if we now look in our list, oh, I know what I did there. That was a bit embarrassing, wasn't it? What I didn't do, I was using these earlier, and something happened. I have to save these, save them again. So that was a bit embarrassing. Yes, I do. My magic trick failed me. The, the rabbit was not in the hat. Um, so let's try that again. All right, those are the two. Go back to my software. Suspense of it all. And let's drag them across again. Send. And hopefully this time, that is sent that information across to the calculator if I saved it correctly. There we go. And we are... I haven't seen it working this slow before. Have you done this many times? I think it's because of the, the webinar we're using as well. And hopefully, ooh, I know what's going on here now. Right, so we've got one list, and that's list two. All the best laid plans, hey, Brian? Uh, yeah, we, 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 uh, yeah, we had this running nicely before, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, it was perfect, wasn't it? That's yeah. because I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually. File, save as. Let's say there's a, a new value, let's go. Um, let's just choose three. Okay. Maybe because it's not got a list, but it was working fine earlier. And now um, just an hour isn't it? Yeah. By showing, showing how easy it is not. But it's not listed as an L1. Yeah, it should be okay. 
should come across fine. Let's save it into L1. Hold your breath, sorry about this. Just before we were coming live, I had a few issues with my computer and a few things um, crashed, so uh, that's my excuse anyway. But the, but the bottom line is it's not too hard to get data, and it's, um, you know, the ABS, as, as you mentioned, is just a great, um, a great site, and so much of the data that is there initially came from the schools. That's the whole idea of the ABS um, census of schools uh, um, activity. Exactly. So yep, thanks, data Brian. From the from school to the ABS. There we are. That's There's the information. And there we go. The plot. And there's 100 numbers there that have been dumped in, 100 pieces of data. Um, we're going to go into plot. It's quicker than typing. All, all of that messing around is quicker than typing. <laughs> yeah, and I think the kids will be much happier with that. Yep. And I also quite like them to turn it on and then go to graph and go, oh, it's not there, where is it? Um, I like them to think about the window and changing it. Um, yep. We could adjust it ourselves and think about what the values were, but to save time, I'm just going to go to zoom and go zoom stat, number nine. And there are all those points. All 100 points quickly dumped onto my graphics calculator. So, as I said at the very start of this uh, part, um, putting a line of best fit into here. We're going to go into stats, across the calculate. I scroll up, the camera bothers us. Go to the bottom wall, kids can just type in alpha D and get to it quicker. We're now going to choose the manual fit. And this is a nice little game to play with the kids where we're going to store that equation. We'll store it into Y1. Nice little game to play with the kids is who can get the best line of best fit to match those points. Um, I'm sure there could be a little bit of cheating going on, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's um, hope that they wouldn't. The, the one that sits down the back and does the regression first. <laughs> That's right, yeah, get the regression and then. Now, obviously, mine, I'm, I'm accepting now that mine's going to be off because uh, this software for me at the moment, and like I said, it's the, the trial version, is really playing up. But you can see that as it moves, it is making a line for me. And it's a bit like when you do zoom box. It's a similar sort of thing, rather than making the box go, it's just making the line. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much now. I don't want to leave some time for Brian to do his thing. I think I see a trend. You see it? I see think I'm, as my well. line look. I'm, I'm doing close points together, which is, um, has, has failed me last time on my quadratic. And are we feeling confident this time? So we're only going to drop two points because we're doing a line. So I'm going to press enter there. There's so the second point dropped. And there's the line. All right, and that's what I think the line of fit is. We need to use done, which is F5 again. And that's now, points are still there. And that now is stored in Y1. And thank you very much. There we go, it's now stored into here. We can now then compare that to what the calculator says it should be. And let's see how close I was. Okay, and while we're waiting for this, I want you to put money on whether the gradient will be greater Oops. or less. I'm going to go oh. for less. If I, I hadn't got the chat, the chat that window's is fairly not quiet. Not Nobody, not nobody's not taking not a not bet on this. Going on. <laughs> um, I would like to have done this one the other way around, actually. I'd like to have... Um, done my belly button height as list one. So I put it into, into X list, but um, I have run out of time in terms of just messing around earlier. It's now done. It will now fit it. And do you notice that it doesn't give us our correlation coefficient? That's because in, in sorry, not in format. Diagnostics. Post we have got the stat diagnostics at the moment off. That's like the old way we used to have to go through catalog um, and turn um, to D, yeah. It's on. Not for some reason, it's really gone slow on me, hasn't it? I'm going to turn it on now. All right, and so now I'll stay up now all the time while I'm using it. I could that short cuts are real camera, I reckon. Yeah. Oh. So there good. we go. Roll up, copy it down. And. This is how good or how much of a match. Woo, look at that, the student data is. And that's not surprising if you actually look at the data. There were some numbers in here that were down a belly button height of 44 with a height of 
8 metres, which is an interesting student. And um, we can see how I compare. I'm not seeing your screen anymore, John. Not seeing my screen at all? Oh, I've got, oh, hang on, now she's jumped through. Yep, I'm now back on the graph. There you go, it's that, that territory internet, so we're just, um, there we go. And, yep, I was a fair bit off. Which well, wasn't really surprising. Who didn't back a lower gradient and a greater y-intercept. You had your chance. You missed out. There it is. So just to finish with, obviously with the points being red, which I could change a different colour, and the line of their fit, that's why the regression equation being red, that's not the best. Um, we can simply come into that regression equation, come across to where we were before, where we used to be able to change the thickness of it, and many colours I can choose. And Big change go. up from now. grey or grey. There's our points in red. Beautiful use of the colour. Like I said, the uh, Smart View works much quicker normally, um, so don't be phased by that. And as I said, it is a beta version. And there's our last final line. So yeah, didn't do very well there, Brian. But um, I talked to my friends in Texas yesterday, and I've got a newer version than you, John. I trust you. Yeah. Now yeah. you're showing off. If, um, I'll, if we zap back to me, I'll. Uh, that's nice. That's yeah, I, I like that nice green one. Yep. Um, I can show you, I'll just quickly breeze through another one. Uh, any questions of John, guys, type them into the chat window. Uh, righto. Brian? Yep. Yeah. So, you've now got my desktop and I will resume my PowerPoint. Uh, you've got a sneak preview of this slide before. I'm going to I'm going to go quickly, guys. Yeah, I'm um, Brian, I'm not, unless it's just me. Sorry, um, handy transformation. You should be seeing. Yep, I'm seeing that. I'll keep quiet then. <laughs> no, no. I think I think this time of day where internet is heavily used, <laughs> it causes the system to be a bit uh, slow. So in fact, even the emulator software that you were showing, I think its speed is reduced by the webinar system itself. Uh -huh. So anyway, sorry, over to you, Brian. We've got uh, a big NBN tower that's just been put up by the, um, by the 6th tee in our golf club, and uh, it's just going gonna, gonna to be brilliant when they switch that on. It's sweet home yak and dander. Um, OK, on, on my screen here, you see one of my old favourite activities revisited. Uh, I say old favourite. John has already talked about um, the value of personal data, and kids can really, really get ownership of the data if it came from them. Um, and you know, how better than a tracing of their own hand? A uh, little bit of a challenge here. I suggest you actually do a tracing of the right hand first, um, so that when we reflect it, it uh, pops across into the reflect in the y-axis. Uh, it pops across into the second quadrant, and it looks like uh, two hands placed on the desktop. Um, Peter Fox has a, an activity that he calls Hands-On Reflections. That's on Australia's TI website, and that's, uh, that's a, a real beauty. Um, I first saw the idea, and Foxy would have as well, uh, on decades ago. Steve, Steve Arnold, I've got there circa 1998. Uh, it would be from about then, and I've used it time and time again in classrooms. Uh, it's always a winner. Um, there's another version called Transforming Fish. At the end of the day, it's get us some sort of shape um, and then talk about how we do our reflections and translations and, uh, and rotations. Um, as I said, I'll, I'll whiz through this fairly quickly. I think you'll get the idea fairly smartly. Basically, trace your right hand on grid paper. Um, tough luck if you're right-handed. Um, you either learn to draw with your left or you get your friend to do the tracing. I suggest centimetre grid paper of that dimension. Put at least 30 points along there taking particular note of key points such as fingertips, etc. Uh, and I want this to be the first quadrant, so we'll set the origin at, um, at the bottom left of your piece of grid paper and then assign coordinates to each of your uh, points. So you've got 30 points along the tracing. And um, then you do have, there's no shortcut here, you do have to type them into your calculator. Uh, x coordinates to L1, y coordinates to L2, 
and this is a really neat and sweet bit, you can produce a continuous line graph using Statplot uh, and then set appropriate window settings to make it look reasonably square and well proportioned. Uh, there's the data that I got. Um, I said 30 points, I only did 25 myself. Um, and there you see I've set up the stat plot. Um, I've, you can see the dimensions of the window I set and the graph that, uh, that resulted. Um, just a little one on the stat plot. If you don't want to see big chunky um, points on your hand, uh, that look like warts I suppose, um, you don't click those, you click down here to the little point and you just get a continuous line running around. So that's the line there that's selected. And how we're going to reflect that into the y-axis, um, maybe show students the first one or have the discussion come up with the answer. Okay, I'm doing a second stat plot where I have the second hand, the magenta hand, shall we call it, in lists uh, where the X list is list three and the Y list is list four. Um, and my Y list is basically the same as it was before, but the X list is the negative of what it was initially in the blue hand. And you can probably see how that's going to give you that result. Um, but how then would we would we translate the hand and rather re rather than reflect it, but just slide it across to the left, say 20 units, and you can see that the, this is the adjustment to be made. Again, I think it's a nicer approach to perhaps pose the problem to students, maybe even show them the image, um, and then see if they can come up with the mathematics behind it. Um, how about a, uh, a change in size? Uh, honey, oh, look, honey, I've shrunk my hand. Um, I've done two things here. I shrunk it by a, a factor of 0.5, um, but I've also added uh, seven here because the origin, remember, would be back here. So I moved my little, my little shrunken green hand across so that it would nicely fit inside the original blue hand. I just thought that was a neater, a neater artistic effect. Um, mathematicians are artists too. Um, what about a rotation um, with fingers chopped off, fingertips chopped off? Uh, this is the deal here for a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation and then you can, po again, perhaps pose the problem, have students play with it, um, and th then ultimately discuss a solution and say, well, what about a 180 degrees rotation or more? And uh, I've, you can see I've zoomed out a little to now, or zoomed, zoomed to show all four quadrants, and it's a nice, fancy looking uh, result. Uh, the big question is, how have I got four hands with only three statistics plots? Any ideas on that one, John? Uh, a bit of inside knowledge on this one, Brian, so I don't know. <laughs> Shall we tell them? What I did is I, I used the first two statistics plots to produce this, and John has already shown you the link software. I then used the link software to capture a calculator screen which of course is an image. You've, John's also showed you how you can import images to the calculator or export to the calculator um, and set them up as a background. So on the right, you see the background image is this and then I've used my, you know, I've used two of my three statistics plots to produce the green hand and the orange hand. What are the relevant, what's the relevant mathematics for that? You may wonder, um, well, I'll let you work that out. Or did I, sh uh, no, I haven't shown you yet. So how, how you would get the, trans the rotation around to here and the rotation around to here gives you a clue. It's a variation of what's happened here. So that's your homework. Um, John, I'm thinking I might just go through and do the apps. Yeah, that's a good idea, bro. Yep. Great. Um, quick revisit to some of the old favourites. Um, We've all got favourites of the apps, and John and I mentioned uh, quite a few in our preparation. John's got some great stuff on uh, um, polynomials or polysymp2 app, um, but I'm just going to quickly show you this. The, the periodic table now in colour for the different groups, I just really think that's a, that's a great jump forward. Um, my favourite of all was always the, um, the ProbSim app, and 
uh, when we're talking about you know the different colours that we draw out of a, a bag, you know, yeah, you know, hey, how how much better is it to actually have those different colours in colours? Makes the graph a whole lot more meaningful, also for the spinner. Um, That's right, Brian. So it's, it's nice that although they're, they're our old favourites, they've been sort of uh, reinvigorated and uh, refreshed to match with the colour, which, is, like you said, is fantastic. Yeah, love it. And kids really get into it. They 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 like that. And it saves uh, you having the uh, the coin toss hit the desk a million times, or the dice throwing across the room. So it makes it a bit more peaceful for the teachers as well. Yeah. Look, I I will point out though. But I, I do think it's important the kids do still toss dice and coins um, for the start of those investigations, and very quickly they realise that for data to be uh, meaningful, they need a huge number of trials, uh, which becomes more trialling for the teacher than anyone else. Um, so if we quick, if we want another hundred trials, we hit the plus fifty a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a lot quieter too, um, and, and of course in the long run more more meaningful data. Um, that's about it for this afternoon. Before handing back to Daisy, I'm just going to throw in a, an ad and I'll, act, I'll let uh, John talk to this more because it's, uh, it's, um, it's where to go next. Yep, so there's a few more um, live webinars happening over the coming months. Um, you just go to the website to check those out. Um, and also you can look at the previous ones on the on-demand section. Uh, this is another one for the next one for the TI-84 CE, uh, focusing mainly on the Cabri, Junior Cabri, uh, which is an app on the calculator, which I think is very much underused, um, mainly because perhaps the lack of color in the past and the, and the clunkiness with the, the lack of um, clarity with the pixels, but now with the new um, CE and, and the better resolution on the screen, this is now um, a fantastic resource and, and tool for teachers to be able to use, which is already on the kids' calculator. So no extra hassle of booking into computer rooms or getting iPads or anything. And as you can see, uh, myself and um, the dashing Rodney Anderson will be running that uh, in June. Thanks, Brian. Terrific. So we'll hand back to you, Daisy. Thank you very much. Um, thank you both, uh, Brian and John, for a ter terrific webinar. And I do dare say that the audience do understand that you're working with beta versions of the um, the software, the emulator software. Uh, that I think with the addition of running it through the webinar program does slow down the computer. So I apologize um, if you did experience a lag. But hopefully you were able to um, basically get a gist of what is coming in September. It's pretty exciting and no doubt you'd agree that color does give the students a richer learning experience. That's Certainly, one for me who I'm a very visual person. Seeing that uh, what John and Brian presented today makes more sense to me. It's not anything else more exciting. Um, after this webinar, you will receive a, a survey for your feedback. Your feedback is very important to us, so if you could take the time to fill that in, that would be wonderful. Um, in addition, you will receive in the next 48 hours a thank you email for attending and it will also provide with links to the PowerPoint um, and documents that Brian mentioned earlier. In addition, you'll get a link to your participant certificate and that's something that I'll send out in the, in the next uh, 48 hours. So there's your PD certificate um, and as both John and Brian mentioned, we've got some upcoming uh, webinars. So the next one is on Tuesday the 19th, which is focused on STEM with Russell and Trevor. And the following one is the one that John referred to, which relates to the 84 CE, and that's looking at geometry. So hopefully you can join us for the next two webinars. Uh, just a reminder that these webinars are recorded and are available for you to look at at a later date on demand. Um, today's webinars will be available actually uh, by Monday on our website. And now everybody, I've got to get ready for the next webinar which starts at 7 o'clock tonight which is focusing on the IB course. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks to the participants for watching. Thanks to our fabulous panellists. Have a great evening and hope to see you soon. Thanks Daisy. Thank you Brian. Thanks everyone. Perfect. Yep. Thank thanks. You.